So you know how people like to buy old server hardware and repurpose it for home use? Let's try that with broadcast hardware. Audio interfaces typically fall into one of two categories. We have consumer and professional. But there's this whole other world of nonsense known as broadcast. It is filled with fussy hardware, limited documentation, and software that looks like it's straight out of the 90s. And that brings us to this, the Audio Science ASI 5211. It's a format converter designed for use in radio and broadcast production. This guy, it can do two stereo channels in and four stereo channels out using a balanced XLR breakout cable, along with AES, EBU, and SPDIF using, you guessed it, more breakout cables. It even has this jumper in case you need to install four of them. But I'm more interested in what might appear at first glance to be a headphone jack. It's not. Audio Science equipped the 5211 with a microphone preamp that can deliver 60 dB of gain along with 48 volts of phantom power. In addition, the 5211 comes with onboard DSP that means it's packing a 5-band parametric equalizer, noise gate, and compander. Now, unfortunately, configuring the DSP bits requires a bit of a workaround. Stay tuned for that. Now, while getting this bit of discontinued broadcast hardware up and working on Linux might be a bit unhinged, I do have good reasons. Audio Science provides Linux drivers, and according to this chart, the 5211 is still supported. And on top of that, the Linux kernel has supported Audio Science hardware since version 2.6 so it might just work out of the box. Let's get this critter plugged in and find out. Behold, ASI Control. You're going to need this Windows-only application to configure the bits that, well, you can't configure on Linux. Why are some of the settings only available in Windows? Because f you, that's why. That said, things you need to be on the lookout for. Phantom Power, Equalizer, Compander, clock source, and your sample rate. Get everything set, save the configuration to the adapter, and figure out what you're going to do with the Windows 10 drive. Right, install Linux on it. Commercial hardware and software typically targets RHEL and Debian Stable. You know me, I'm going to go with Debian Stable, and right up front, Debian's telling us that it sees the thing, and this thing, it needs firmware. But now I know that the driver, well, it's called ASI HPI, and the name of the firmware I'm going to be on the lookout for is DSP6200.bin. So I'm going to make a note of that and continue the installation. Here we are on a fresh install, so let's take a peek at Pavu Control. No surprises here. The only audio device is the NVIDIA GPU. Now, I just want to confirm that by listing the available audio devices using Aplay. And while we're here, let's find out if the 5211 is secretly just a 5111 stapled to a PCI Express bridge chip. And the answer is yes. That bit of lazy engineering has the potential to generate all types of fun and exciting compatibility issues. I don't hate bridge chips. Bridge chips are neat. They allow hardware built for the PCI bus to work with PCI Express, and that's how I'm able to use old tech like this Firewire card on a modern system. Or at least I was. The bridge chip on the 5211 doesn't like the one on the Firewire card, and it refused to work until I removed it. Now, I knew to look for this because I've run into similar issues, uh, especially with the VX222E from Digigram. They stapled the VX222 to a PCI Express interface using a bridge chip, and Audio Science basically did the same thing with the 5111. I get why companies do this, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's definitely something you should be aware of. Back to the desktop, I'm going to grep anything that rhymes with ASI HPI, and that confirms what the installer told us the kernel has the driver but no firmware. Where do we get firmware for audio devices on Linux? GitHub. Here we are on the ELSA firmware GitHub page. We can right click and save it. I'm kidding. Seriously, who would do that? Go ahead and click on code and we're going to copy the URL to the clipboard. Back on the terminal, I'm going to install git with sudo apt install git and now we can run git clone followed by the URL that we copied from the GitHub page. Now we have a directory called ELSA firmware. So let's have a look inside. There's a git compile script, and if we give that a run, 
it errors out because we're missing some additional software bits. I'm going to install them by running sudo apt install autoconf and build essential. Now when I run git compile it will configure the firmware for installation. All that's left to do is install it with sudo make install. Now let's take a look at the lib firmware directory and there's our ASI HPI directory. If we take a look inside we should have there it is, the DSP6200.bin. Now let's give the system a reboot, cross our pinky toes, and see if everything loads correctly. Here we are back from the reboot, so let's list the ALSA devices using Aplay, and there it is. Let's check the message output, and it looks like the firmware is loaded correctly, and we have 30 mixer controls. Time to investigate that nonsense with ALSA mixer. I'm going to press F6 to select the device, and we can see all of the available controls. Everything seems relatively straightforward, minus whatever's going on with this mic input. Anyway, let's see if we can get some audio out of it, and possibly into it. Back on the desktop, playing a YouTube video, the ASI 5211 is working like really just any other sound card. And with a little bit of slider jiggling in QAS Mixer, I was able to adjust the gain on the microphone preamp and record a bit of audio. But the real question is, does the 5211 know how to jack? Jack is the low latency sound server on Linux. And if you're looking for a bad analogy, think of it like the AISO drivers on Windows. I'm going to start jack with my baseline configuration of 48K128.2 in synchronous mode. And it's not having it. Not even a little bit. Moving up to 1024 allows Jack to start, but it's spitting X run callbacks, but it does show up in the graph, and I could test the round trip latency, but with a 40 millisecond buffer, there's really no point. I did spend some time testing other period buffer combinations. Nothing was stable. What about the official drivers? Let's head over to audioscience.com and check out the G's. How big is that image? Wow. I'm having dial-up flashbacks. Anyway, we're here for drivers. We have the beta and the stable, and the stable is newer than the beta. Welcome to broadcast. The last updated this year with support for 6x kernels. That's nice, but if we scroll down a bit, we're going to learn that support for the 5111 and 5211 was dropped in 2023, making this driver support page a cornucopia of lies. And if you do try to compile the latest supported driver on kernel 516 or newer, you get this. That leaves us with two options. One, compile kernel 515 from source. Or two, find a Linux distro that ships kernel 515 in 2024. Since nobody wants to sit through a kernel compile, that means we're installing Ubuntu Cantankerous Kitty Cat. Right after we download the image on the homepage and see how big it is. Seriously, that's bugging 1.5 megs, and it's a JPEG. You can't explain that. Here we are in Ubuntu 2004 on kernel 515. Let's see if we can get those 42039 drivers from the website. And there they are. Let's give them a download, and we're just going to extract that to our downloads folder. Now, in a terminal, I'm going to navigate to the also driver folder and install a gang of dependencies. There'll be a list of them on interfacinglinux.com. Now we can run make followed by make install. And unfortunately, that's not going to make the card magically appear. So let's give the system a reboot to see if it initializes. Back from the reboot and the 5211 is being detected correctly. Now, let's see if we can connect it to Jack at 48K, 128.2. Nope. 256. Nope. 1024. Hey, there it goes and no X runs. So that gives us two capture, two playback, with a 42 millisecond buffer, making it useless for live monitoring with a digital audio workstation. But it should work fine with Rivendale. You see, elves, huge fans of terrestrial broadcasting, and there's no FCC in Middle Earth, so everyone has their own little station. But seriously, Rivendell is the open source radio automation system that supports audio science cards and the Jack Sound server. And you don't mind running an old version of Ubuntu? It should get the job done. This, this was a neat bit of hardware for its time. Having a mic preamp and onboard DSP on a PCI Express card was a really cool party trick. Unfortunately, official Linux support was dropped in 2023. 
and the drivers built into the Linux kernel don't play nice with the jack. And even if they did, it looks like this guy needs a minimum 1024 buffer to initialize, so you wouldn't be able to use it for monitoring post FX in a digital audio workstation or on your live stream. And there's no way to get at the DSP bits from Linux because no API for you. Bad penguin. But if you want to pick one up to hack on, you can find them on eBay for between 140 to 160 bucks if you look around. Audio Science has a modern version of the 5211 called the 5811, and it does have a low latency mode and, brace yourselves, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for $954. And who knows, I might run across one in the future to try out because I would like an alternative to my current solution the RME AIO Pro. Not that there's anything wrong with the AIO Pro, but as things stand, there's really no option B on Linux. You can read my full write-up on interfacinglinux.com, and if you have any questions about your Linux AV setup, go ahead and post them in the forums. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome with Linux.